good morning. Munir Ajam uh, with another video on uh, project management. In this video, I'm going to focus on the topics that may be stepping out of project management for a little bit and uh, discuss the concept of project management versus project leadership versus project delivery. Um, and, and I think in the last video, when I was talking about the, some of the inconsistencies in Pumbak, we had talked about scope management and we'd mentioned that in scope planning, in the scope knowledge area, uh, we do develop a, uh, we create a work breakdown structure. So we create uh, a list of all the work packages that has to be done on the project. And then in control, we control to verify that these work packages are complete. However, where is the execution? I know one of the issues here, at least in my understanding, and I might be wrong, it could be the difference between uh, product scope and project scope. Okay, so the project scope is, uh, if we talk about project scope, it's basically we, you know, an in integration chapter, we have what we call the direct, direct and managed project work. And that basically the idea is that uh, we don't, in project management, we don't do the work, we just direct it and manage it. And the work is a product oriented, it's not project management oriented. Um, to me, this frustrates me. Yeah. And uh, also, a lot of things that often frustrate me, especially when it comes to the PMP exam, is having to know if a certain input or an output or a tool is used in which process or which process groups. Uh, in real life, you know, I've been in project management for over 30 years. No one, no time, at no time ever we have to worry about, oh, is this thing here is an output to this specific process which might be a controlling process or an executing process? Is there a request for change? Is that an executing process or uh, uh, a controlling process? Uh, for the PMP exam, great. You know, you need to know these things. Good luck. Yeah. But now coming back to real life and how and my interest, my interest and my methodology in most of the work I have done. And maybe it's because I'm biased because I came from uh, client or buyer types organization in the oil and gas. My objective is to deliver a project, not to manage project. You know, if, if, let me mention it in a different way. If, you know, I used to work for companies like Exxon and, and BSF and Shell and Saudi Aramco. In these companies, we don't do project in order to make profit from engineering or design or construction. Yeah. Profit uh, projects are a tool. You know, when we talk about project management and projects, projects are tool to increase the capabilities of the organization to realize benefit, to create benefits. Obviously, benefit, and if you are a for-profit organization, benefit is related to, uh, of course, increasing profits uh, and probably increasing capacity or entering a new market or whatever the case might be. So from a buyer perspective, from a client organization, from a project owner perspective, let me use these different terms, our objective is to deliver projects. Yeah, And projects are uh, basically to increase the capabilities, which means to increase the assets as of the organization. So uh, projects are part of asset management. Now, I'm not going to expand this discussion today and talk about asset management in general and talks about product life from you know uh, cradle to grave as they say i'm gonna focus more on as the question of uh, the first part i'm gonna focus on delivery versus uh, management so if we are project managers if we are project management department or a team in an organization that's responsible to build a new school or a hospital or a refinery or a petrochemical plant our objective is to deliver to deliver a product yeah, not just to manage. Yeah, manage, obviously, ideally would love to do it with our internal resources. Some organizations do not even have project management functions in departments, so they outsource project management. Regardless who does the project management, our objective is not to manage project you know, as a service. Our objective is to deliver project. And that's very important for us to distinguish that maybe one of the challenges today, and we see failures in project management because we focus on management 
rather than the, the more of a holistic aspect of talking about delivery. Yeah, of course, to deliver something, we need to manage it. But we need, before we manage it, we need to plan it. We need to uh, uh, make sure that it's feasible. We need to do a whole spectrum, and that goes into the life cycle. That goes from idea to closure of a given project, that we must look at all the different aspects. But in order to do this, we must consider more than just pure project management. I know many academics, they like to, to, be, to follow the purest option. Um, here I might want to touch on ISO. ISO 21500 says, clearly says, that in order for us to, to do project, to accomplish project, we must, we must use three types of processes. They are those purest project management processes, okay, such as uh, I think ISO have 39 processes instead of 47 that the PUMBAC has. But we also need product-oriented processes and support processes. Now, ISO says, look, we need all of these, but since we are a guidance on project management reference, we are going to focus only on the project management process. That's great. Yeah, nothing wrong with being a purist. Uh, and, of course, the PUMBAC is talking about managing a project. Uh, so that's fine. This is why sometimes people said, well, if that's the case, then why do you have collect requirements as a process? Collecting requirement is a technical action, which is more product-oriented rather than project management oriented. Uh, again, I do not want to get here to splitting hairs and to find out this, uh, what's important to me, what I'm, what I'm concerned with, is that uh, to deliver project. I have to deliver project successfully, which means I need to focus if I am in a project management organization or a project delivery organization, uh, I need to focus on making sure a project is delivered successfully. And start, that starts with the idea and making sure that the project aligns to the strategic objective and then performing a good feasibility study to ensure that the project is feasible and we can deliver it successfully. And then we go through the other stages of a methodology such as the camp methodologies that we have developed in SUCAD. So throughout this, yeah, yes, as a project management, as a project, let's say I'm, we are the project, I'm the project manager on such a project. Yes, I'm mostly focused on the project management, but I'm managing the project people, the project management team, but we need, our job is also to ensure that the technical people are doing their job. So they, they need to make sure that the technical people are following a good process and delivering their project. So from that perspective, we need to have more of a holistic view, focusing on delivery rather than management. That's, an, that's the first important distinction that I need to focus on this video. The next part of this video, I'm going to focus more on, do we need management or leadership? Yeah, And I don't want to get into a debate here or a long discussion on what's the difference between leadership and management. And there are a lot of literatures and books and people have written about this. I'm just going to refer to something uh, a good uh, a professional colleagues have uh, written a series of the human aspect for project management back in the 90s, uh, Mr. Vijay Verma, uh, who wrote this series of books. And in there, in one of those books, he focused on a chapter that talks about leadership and management. And in there, uh, there is an image that talks about you need both. Yeah. And ideally, what he said, along the life cycle, so we use the life cycle model, early in the life cycle, you need leadership skills. Now, ideally, of course, we hope that the project manager have leadership skills. If not, we need to find those leadership, leadership skills somewhere, maybe from the sponsor or someone else. So early in the project, you need that leadership more than management because we need to focus on making sure that the project is being set up properly, we have organized, we have assembled the team, we have aligned the people on the objective. There are a lot of skills that are more about vision, strategic align. not strategic because every project is different, but is more of an alignment and ensuring all the stakeholders are aligned and ensuring all the team members have bought into the project and they have contributed to the project development and all of these things. These are the management leadership skills that we need and ideally, you know, once the projects start moving into the cranking mode, we need more of management because management is what imp imposes discipline 
and we reach to the level of towards the end, we need the leadership to ensure that we close the project properly and to rally the people when they start to get tired and demotivated to ensure to continue so we can finish the work. With this, uh, we finish this video and emphasize again the need that we need to think more of a project uh, delivery rather than pure management. And we also need to think of leaderships with management because we need both, and it's not automatically just because you have a good project manager that doesn't mean that mean that person is a good leader. Yeah, those skills are not the same, and we need to ensure that people understand uh, when do we need more of a leader and more, when do we need more of a manager. If the same person can do both, great. If not, we need to look for ways of accomplishing those uh, uh, those important initiative and task to deliver capabilities and enable the realization of benefits. Thank you.